Hello, everyone. Um, it's really, really lovely to be here um, to join you all this evening. Um, I came in um, June and I just want to thank um, Bishop McEwen and Father Peter and Tony for inviting me and hosting me in June. And I had a lovely time um, meeting many people and I recognise a few faces this evening. Um, but it's a real uh, joy for me to be with you just to introduce Sycamore to you. Um, so I'm Susan Longhurst, I am director of Sycamore. I work with Father Stephen Wang, who is, well, you recognize, I'll, I'll introduce him, but he is, um, he leads the Sycamore course. He presents the Sycamore course, um, and we're very proud of the resources that I'm going to introduce to you this evening. So um, with that in mind, I'm gonna share my screen so that I can walk you through a little bit of um, what Sycamore is, and hopefully, um, to give you a sense and a, and a really enthusiasm for how you can use Sycamore in the diocese, in your parish, in your community. Um, so initial reflections. Well, I uh, met Father Peter and Tony uh, when we attended the Catholic Parish Summit in 2024. Well, this year in May, actually, it's, uh, it seems a long time ago now. But essentially, I was there to present Sycamore and to meet um, lots of people that had either been using Sycamore or I could introduce to Sycamore. And actually, it was a really interesting reaction when I met people because they said, oh, we know Sycamore, you're the Catholic Alpha. And I thought, oh, OK, good. Well, you know, this is this is good. We're all sharing the good news. But it was interesting to see how people um, knew us. They said, oh, you're the British word on fire. And I thought, wow, this is, you know, we're being compared to some of the greats actually um, out there. Um, and lastly, oh, sorry. And lastly, just catechists coming up and sharing their um, feedback. So one catechist said to me, um, this programme brought me back from burnout and made me feel excited again. And I was really heartened to hear that. She said that she had left the parish, there'd been lots on her shoulders, um, that she had experienced this sense of just needing to retreat, but actually found, um, found Sycamore on the internet, watched a couple of sessions and actually said that she felt excited again. She said, I thought actually this is how I can share my faith. So um, this was music to my ears, um, but it was just lovely to connect with people and to sort of see how people had both encountered Sycamore and how they thought of us. So um, we just move on. So another uh, piece of feedback just from participants that have used um, Sycamore. This course made my husband want us to pray together every morning. He had come to the Sycamore Advent session without me. And in the small group, someone shared about the power of praying together. He came back and suggested we would pray together every morning. She says, I can't thank God enough. I was so happy. It was an answer to my prayers and Sycamore did it. Well, Sycamore is really just providing that fertile soil, essentially, to um, help people come to a sense of discussion about their faith, a sense of sharing their experience. Um, but it was really heartening to hear that. And hopefully I can share a little bit more as we progress from uh, participants and leaders, those that feed back on in how they've been using Sycamore and, and more importantly, the positive reception that they get. So just a little bit about me and um, the context around which um, I began to work for Sycamore. So um, my my background is actually um, academic. So I am uh, I work at St Mary's University and I in Twickenham in London. And I lecture undergraduates and postgraduates on essentially um, the reception of religion in contemporary culture. So my doctoral research was looking at the flip side of this. It was actually looking not at religious decline. We know that religion is declining in contemporary culture. We know that people are um, we're seeing in demographic surveys that there are more and more people ticking no religious upbringing, no religion no religious identity on demographic surveys. We know that there's a sense of increasing secularity in culture. But I was looking at the flip side and I was looking at Catholic conversion more because we had discovered that there were a consistent number of people every year, both in this country and in America, that were turning to Catholicism, that wanted to be received into the Catholic church and very much within this context of a secular culture. So in the sense of, or in the spirit of my research, um, I gained a really sort of accurate snapshot, I think really of what people are dealing with now when they're thinking about faith. Um, 
and it resonated with my work at Sycamore as well. So this sense of a loss of Christian fluency, um, actually people felt that they weren't able to share their faith. They weren't even really to talk about, uh, able to talk about faith, that they had somehow lost the language of it. Or if they hadn't lost the language of it, they'd maybe lost the opportunity. There just weren't people around to talk to about faith. The people in my research that wanted to become Catholic had such a strong sense of what a Catholic identity was. They recognised it instantly when they talked to people um, and they felt that this was what drew them to become wanting to become Catholic. The factors, the motivators that drew people to Catholicism were essentially um, encompassed in the relationships that were around them, the relationships with their loved ones in the past and also present, the people that they met when they came to church. Those relationships really did give people a sense of community, a sense of what Christianity and Catholic Christianity was. And it really fueled this spiritual hunger that people have, because that's actually what I found through my doctoral research, that people were hungry for spiritual nourishment. Um, they were hungry to learn about Catholicism and wanted to become Catholic. So this was um, the research that I conducted at, at St Mary's University. Previous to that, and this is probably um, an important and interesting point, is that I was a youth worker for Southwark Archdiocese. So I was um, uh, heading up some youth ministry training. In the course of that work, I discovered Sycamore. So we were working with young people. We were working with um, youth ministers, with parents, with teachers. And I discovered Sycamore and the sense that actually families were using um, Sycamore, watching the sessions with their young people, talking about faith, and that because of the way the sessions are structured, they found that discussion was particularly easy. So I had already experienced Sycamore in my work as a youth minister. Um, and that's when I, um, in November 2020, in the middle of COVID, um, actually began to work for Sycamore. So I became mission support manager. Um, my role really was to um, grow the scope of Sycamore in this country and internationally. And in a sense, my work was quite easy because once people started using Sycamore, the word of mouth meant that they were just passing on um, their joy, their experiences of using the resources. Um, and this was a particularly positive thing that I could see was happening. So my job was to really foster that. So I work with dioceses. Um, internationally and nationally, um, just really supporting how supporting them and how they can use Sycamore. So um, you're probably thinking, OK, um, we've heard about this wonderful resource. What about the Sycamore story? And we know that story is so important and there is a wonderful story behind Sycamore. Um, so that's Father Stephen sitting on the wall, Father Stephen Wang. Um, Sycamore was created and really grew out of um, a discussion that Father Stephen, uh, who was working at Newman House in Westminster with some university students, a discussion that he had with those students because they were saying to him and telling him that it was becoming increasingly difficult to talk about their faith with their peers and that actually the friends that were around them had such a spectrum of religious experience um, and knowledge that actually it was very difficult for them to come together to talk about faith and the result was they said that actually those opportunities to talk about faith were becoming few and far between. So the students with Father Stephen decided to make some films, make some presentation of um, the Catholic faith in a way that was accessible for people that would be visually appealing, but get people talking. But they did this on a shoestring. Um, so they made the films and they came up with the strapline Sycamore, thinking about life and faith. Now the films, um, as I said, were made on a shoestring, but were on the internet. Um, and were shared and shared and shared. And the interesting thing was, particularly for the trustees, that they were being shared amongst lots of different types of groups, amongst young people, amongst those in parishes, amongst older people. It seemed to have um, a real life and resonance with people and it was being used. And that's ultimately the, the most wonderful measure. So because of um, this, the, the, Sycamore, the Sycamore trustees took the decision to remake the films, but on a much higher production value. So they did. And they um, have 
produced 20 wonderful films, but they were launched in 2019 and with a different strapline to really celebrate the, the new production. And the strapline was Sycamore, What Do You Believe? Now, why Sycamore? Well, you'll be familiar with the Sycamore tree, um, the story of Jesus coming to the town of Jericho and Zacchaeus wanting to meet Jesus, but not being able to see him because of the crowds. Um, because he was um, fairly small, he couldn't see over the crowds to even see him or talk to him. So he climbs the sycamore tree and gains a better view and Jesus sees him. They uh, get to know each other. They start talking and then his relationship with Jesus starts from there um, and his life in faith starts from there. His journey, his faith journey starts from there. So the sycamore tree, we feel, is a particularly um, beautiful symbol, really, of what Sycamore can be, essentially, which is to introduce people to Jesus and to give them a personal experience with Christ and to accompany them, to journey with them um, through that through that wonderful and opportunity to get to know Christ. Um, now, the films, as I said, there are 20 of the films, and I'm going to show you a small clip, actually, um, from one of them in a second. Um, what I wanted to just let you know, I suppose the piece of good news, is that Sycamore used to op offer or operate on a subscription model. So um, when I was using it as a diocesan coordinator, there was a small subscription for each year. Um, once COVID hit, the trustees and Father Stephen took the decision that they wanted to remove that subscription so that people could access the resources for free so sycamore currently is a free resource um it's all of the films are accessible on the internet you can download them um, and i'm going to walk you through some of the um some of those resources to sort of let you know how you can use it but essentially um sycamore is a free resource so now what i'd like to do is to show you a clip of um session seven film seven which is the gift of faith and I'm going to stop it after the first segment um, to show you how Sycamore and the Sycamore films are um, ordered, essentially. Um, there are three parts to every Sycamore film. So if you watched it from start to finish with a group, you probably would be looking at this lasting around an hour. But as it stands, Sycamore is in three sections. You will watch a little bit of content like we're gonna do now, and then you're given some discussion questions. You're asked to pause the video and then think about those questions. And if you have a group with you, then that's an opportunity for you to discuss them. The beauty of Sycamore is the fact that it is it is ultimately focused around discussion. It's getting people talking and having these regular breaks um, in all of the films, and they're in exactly the same position, so you get to know, means that every group has this opportunity to start to talk about what they've just seen, to, to sort of reflect on what that means for their lives. Um, so without uh, any, any more ado, I will press play. Do let me know if you can't hear, but this is the first segment of session seven, The Gift of Faith. language, the words belief and faith have slightly different meanings. If I say, I believe in you, it means I think you're telling the truth. If I say I have faith in you, it means I trust you. It's something more personal. To have faith in someone is quite a big thing. It's almost like a commitment. It's saying, I think that you are trustworthy and I want to be faithful to you. Sometimes we need to move from belief to faith, from the head to the heart, from a vague opinion to an actual commitment. You see this in the first Christians. 
It took them a long time to work out what they really believed about Jesus. Who on earth is this man? There's a lovely moment when Jesus seems to be losing patience with their endless discussions. They can't decide whether he's John or Elijah or Jeremiah or one of the prophets. So Jesus says to them, I'm paraphrasing slightly, he says, for goodness sake, what on earth do you actually believe? Who do you think that I am? And at last, Peter has the courage to say, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. It's a statement of belief. And for Christians in every age, their statements of belief have been absolutely central. And they've expressed their beliefs in the prayers and the teachings of the Christian tradition. But for the disciples, belief turns into faith. Faith is about a relationship, a commitment. You have to actually do something. When Peter is sinking beneath the waves on the Lake of Galilee, he has to reach out his hand and take the hand of Jesus. When Matthew hears the call of Jesus, he has to stand up, walk out the door, and leave the tax office where he is working. When the people of Jerusalem are moved by the preaching of Peter, they have to repent and be baptized. This is faith. In the Gospels, there are some things that Jesus can only do if people are willing to put their trust in him. He heals a blind man outside Jericho, and then he says to him, your faith has made you well. That miracle only took place because the man was willing to shout out and ask for the help of Jesus. And there's another passage in the Bible where it says, he could work no miracles there because of their lack of faith. He was in Nazareth, his hometown, and the people there, they were so cynical and suspicious that Jesus just walked away. Our lack of faith is like a roadblock. However much he wants to pass, he won't force his way through. Think of any classic heist movie. The opening scene is always the same. The ringleader gathers together a group of old acquaintances, usually in an abandoned warehouse, and he tells them how they are going to rob the bank. The plans to the bank are laid out on the table. There's a local street map, usually with toy cars, to tell them how the getaway is going to work. He explains to them the risks, the prize, the cut that they will take home. And then he looks at each of them individually and says, are you in? And there's a pregnant pause. Are you in? Are you ready to commit yes or no? Now, this is not about robbing banks, but there is a connection. Jesus says to his disciples, are you in? He says to the young fisherman, are you willing to leave your nets in the boat and follow me? He says to the man he's healed, are you willing to go home to your friends and family and tell them what the Lord has done for you? He says to all of us, are you willing to take a step and to show that you trust me? This is the meaning of faith. Oh, sorry. Um, I think I'm, I've, I've moved it on. Essentially, you saw those questions. Um, those are the questions that, and I can get those back on the screen in a little while, um, that you would then stop and turn to your group and then discuss with them. So the, the questions are often um, deceptively simple. Um, they will just reflect on your own experience. Have you ever um, had this experience before? Can you share your um, journey of prayer? Can you share your experience of trust, who you trust? Um, what does it take to trust somebody? Sometimes, as I said, they feel deceptively simple, but we know that they engender discussion and they encourage people to share their experiences. So it's a, 
when I introduced the session seven, this was one that I, I picked out because um, I know a couple of people on the call have probably heard some of my presentation before and might have seen one of the other sessions. So I thought, actually, let's find one of the sessions um, that are slightly later. Um, now, there are 20 of those sessions and each one of them um, can be watched on its own. But essentially, the 20 films cover all four pillars of the catechism. They start from a very gentle beginning, looking at some of those key themes that everyone can reflect on. So the search for happiness, what makes us happy? Um, what's our experience of God? What do we think of God? Who is Jesus? What are some of the experiences that we bring to those early experiences of faith? Now, it may be that some people feel um, that they need a little bit more time to get going. Actually, the goal of the first 10 sessions is to bring people gently into discussion with others and to give them confidence to share their own experiences, because this is where faith comes from. Now, the goal of Sycamore through these 20 films is to bring people on a journey. It's about it's initially passing on and giving them that core Christian message, the kerygma, and then slowly bringing them into how they can be formed as disciples um, and thinking about their place in the church. So we move very gently from this initial encounter with Jesus to think about how people can in, embody and embrace faith and Christ in their lives. So it's a gentle journey of discovery, but what you will find is that the films build on each other. So you could use them individually if you had a particular need. For example, those um, in parishes might be running um, a confirmation class and they might actually want to think about looking at um, some of the films in 11 to 20, so the sacraments of baptism and confirmation. They want maybe thinking about teaching their young people, thinking about how young people pray. So they might want to in incorporate film, The Power of Prayer from 1 to 10, and then How to Pray, actually sort of leading them through, but always having discussion at the heart of um, their journey. Um, now, the other thing about the films is that they are ordered in such a way that they can be put together as pathways. And I'm going to explain how that works, but essentially, um, the films have been ordered so that you are presented with lots of different choices as to how you can run them and they are modular. So I'll walk you through the pathways in a second, but really this is an opportunity for, for you to think about how what your needs are as a parish, as a group, a community, maybe in school, and to think how can I use Sycamore to get discussion going? How can I use Sycamore to journey with people in their um, life of faith? So these are the 20 films. One of the things that we are particularly proud of in the films is that, and I mentioned this earlier, that they aim to reach people wherever they are, um, regardless of their religious experience, knowledge, um, background. So the films have inclusive language. They don't use jargon. They don't use terms which are going to make people feel uncomfortable or outside the conversation. Um, in that sense, it really does hope and foster a really lovely um, and warm sense of community, but also a sense that people can share their experiences because um, this is a language which everyone understands. So the lack of jargon is something which we think fosters discussion and particularly small group discussion. Um, as I said, it's a comprehensive programme. You can be sure and reassured that, as I said, if you work through all of these films, you'd be covering all four pillars of the catechism. So it is rooted in Catholic teaching. Um, also throughout the film, and I, I stopped it just short of this, but there are vox pops. So once the film comes back um, to Father Stephen, there are... Um, uh, there's feedback and contributions from people who, who um, are just on the street. So those that are thinking about the same subjects and just giving their own um, their own perspective. And this is very powerful for people because they can really relate to those people that are feeding back. So um, the Vox Pops are particularly well liked um, amongst the groups and really make people feel that their um, their perspectives are shared by others and they can see that happening. Mm -hmm. OK, so just to think now about um, what accompanies those films. Um, well, 
The good news is, um, and this is very much at the heart of Sycamore and what we hope to do, um, we don't want you to have to reinvent the wheel. If you decide to use Sycamore, um, either on individual films or within a pathway, which I'm going to show you in a second, we don't want you to have to do lots and lots of work um, to present or to prepare. We hope to have done all of that work for you. So with every film, you can download the film, you can stream it. There's a lots, lots of different formats that you can use if you choose to download it onto your computer. Um, every film then comes with a session guide, which has all of those discussion questions, the three sets of discussion questions which appear throughout the film. Um, any mention of scripture or te church teaching will be backed up in those session guides. So you can see in the picture here, the longer readings from the catechism, scripture references, you are supported in the sense that if you decide to run a group, you have all of the content in front of you. You've got those key ideas that are running through the films. So the key themes. Um, and you might decide to give these to your participants, those that are joining a group. Or it might be that you, as a leader, keep those. And that's, um, that's enough preparation for you. And that's all, actually, that you need to do. So I have put the um, web address at the bottom there. Essentially, www.sycamore.fm will get you onto the Sycamore website. Um, and then you can start browsing. You can start looking through the films. You can start looking at the session guides. So we hope that these resources are comprehensive, that it means that we're taking away that element that you, you then have to go and do an additional amount of work to prepare um, and that you're supported as leaders. So I mentioned that um, the films, there are 20 films and that there is a modular component to them. Um, there are over 30 pathways, so 30 different ways in which you can use the films. So it might be, for example, that you might want to run um, an advent course as we are rocketing towards Christmas already, but you might decide to do that. There are four films which have been put together um, with particular discussion questions that you could use for Advent. It could be that you are thinking about RCIA. Well, we have, um, I think, four or five different pathways for RCIA, um, different in terms of length. You could choose a seven week pathway or you could choose a 30 week pathway or an 18 month one. So there's lots of different options for every pathway that we have. And we have segmented them into different needs that we think um, people will need um, for their ministry. So inquiry, formation, sacramental preparation, um, and if you're working in a school. So the pathways really are uh, varied and you can spend time just looking through them, but essentially they aim to support you wherever you are in a parish, um, whatever you're trying to do. Many people these days have said to me when I've been working with teams, um, look, we just want to get something going. We want to just bring people together and make them feel excited about their faith. We want to, to get a community started and start, start the discussion, in which case there are inquiry pathways which lead people on that gentle journey through some of those key topics, like I said, um, what is happiness? How do we understand God? Who is Jesus? And then lead them through. So those inquiry pathways can be a really lovely way to ignite the faith in your community or just bring people together and just... Um, have that lovely opportunity to share your own faith. So there's lots of different pathways. They can be adapted. And I have um, emails from leaders all the time that say to me, look, is it okay if I use sessions two and three of a seven session pathway and then perhaps do something else for a couple of weeks and then use the next ones? And I say, absolutely. This is tailored to what your needs are um, in the parish or in your community. So just a little bit more feedback from... Um, this is a leader um, and they said, as a Sycamore course leader, the experience has been a positive, purposeful and powerful journey of spiritual awakening. I particularly like the way we analyze the questions and have to think deeply about what it is really asking of us as human beings. It's also great to see participants developing in confidence and clearly gaining a deeper understanding of their faith. It goes back to that point right at the beginning that I think people are hungry for spiritual conversation, um, but often feel slightly overwhelmed if they haven't perhaps been to church for a while or they, they haven't had that opportunity to share their faith. And there is a sense of bringing people into that confidence, bringing developing their own confidence within a group setting that is going to make them 
develop new friendships and also develop confidence in talking about what's important to them um, and what their faith really means. So the feedback that we get from participants and leaders um, is really powerful because it sort of um, it shows us why those discussion questions work and how Sycamore is helping um, generally in the parishes and, and groups and, and in the diocese. Um, I wanted to just highlight, and I'm, I'm keeping a track of time, hopefully I'm not going on too long, and then we'll have a chance to stop and think about um, mm -hmm. how perhaps this um, maybe has uh, ignited something in you, maybe encouraged you to think how you might like to use Sycamore. But what I wanted to do was just to sort of signpost really how parishes and the diocese, the diocese that I work with are using Sycamore. And they're doing this in a variety of ways. Um, Many times they will embed, embed sycamore pathways within their year. So um, each year they will run an advent pathway um, leading up to Christmas, then perhaps um, a Lent pathway, or they'll use sycamore for RCIA a, or baptism prep. Um, it's something which uh, marks the year and that the parish community know is coming. So um, many uh, parishioners will say it's great actually in the preparation up to Advent having this chance to come together as a parish um, is a wonderful opportunity so that's what we often hear um, and for those running sacramental prep and preparing for confirmation um, working with parents uh, for Holy Communion prep or baptism prep it becomes something which is um, helpful to them and, and and we're very pleased that that happens and as I've said here one parish that we have running uh, that's in Leeds is running six of these pathways concurrently so it's a very large parish but you can see how it can work um, and lots of different pathways can work at the same time as I said it might be a particular thing that you're after it might be that you're um, wanting to work with young people um, to explore what it means to be a Christian in the modern world, in which case we have particularly themed pathways um, that can answer that need for you, perhaps provide a solution. It could be that RCIA is something that you are um, thinking about in that ministry um, and how you can supplement perhaps what you have been doing or um, just have a look at how Sycamore could support you in that. Now, many parishes will often say to me, look, I've, we've been using Alpha um, and are they compatible, Sycamore and Alpha? And I say, absolutely. And this is the joy of working with parishes because there is such a rich array of programmes out there, all sharing the good news. Um, in, in many ways, parishes that have run Alpha like the difference of running Sycamore after that because it's, it, it is a different format. Um, so it just gives people, it brings people together, it keeps the community together that have journeyed through Alpha and then gives them something new. So often we see parishes cycling between Alpha and Sycamore. Um, we've got marriage and family life pathways. We develop new pathways all the time and in response to the needs that we think are out there. Now, marriage and family life ministry, we know um, is an area where we're seeing um, some teams struggling. Um, the, the teams are getting smaller. Perhaps there's not the resources. And so Having that um, new pathway, we call it the gift um, pathway, journeying with couples together. Um, this has helped to keep marriage and family life, for example, teams um, and to support them. So there are particular contexts that we see Sycamore being used as well as internationally. Now we have um, over 13 translations of Sycamore. So um, this helps particularly um, where we see very diverse communities in Southwark. There are lots of different um, parishes with lots of um, different languages at one time. So actually um, the translations are very helpful in that sense. But internationally, we see teams doing very large scale launches and often they'll use Sycamore as part of those launches and they'll bring in the university and the youth ministry teams um, as well as catechists and parishes. So these are just some of the ways in which we see Sycamore being used. Um, another feedback from uh, a, clerk, uh, a priest that used Sycamore, he said, having been part of every possible type of programme before, I have to say I was a sceptic, but having run Sycamore and seen the impact, we're converted. We finished washing up, putting away the chairs after a very successful Sycamore Advent course at around 10 o'clock yesterday. And even after the hard work, we feel enlivened and energised. And he says, I'm naming this the Sycamore effect. Um Essentially, this is this is lovely feedback for us. Um, we know that there are lots of programs out there and we know that 
particularly it can be draining to say the least to think oh, okay it's another program I think to have the feedback um, often helps particularly with clergy they can they can talk to others and, and realize actually this is something that works and that it has this lovely effect um, in bringing people together so I think that some this is a this is a very real um piece of feedback that I think speaks a lot to what we're trying to do and sometimes it can be it can be tiring it can be really draining when we think oh how can we energize our community um but either way um this was a very nice bit of feedback for us um as a priest this this priest comments I found it very life-giving to see seeds of faith being planted and to see group leaders grow um, another priest says sycamore has allowed me to live the priesthood in such a life-giving way priests know uh, need to know about sycamore for their own sake and not just for how it will help their people um the first piece the first quote on this slide i just want to come back to because one of the things that um i guess is a, a real joy for me is to see leaders coming from sycamore sessions and this is a particularly important reality that very often in parishes we see one or two leaders and often they're carrying a burden of lots of different ministries and lots of different um, tasks in the parish. Ultimately, we want to see more leaders and we want to see them grow from parishes and grow from sycamore groups. One of the things that we've heard uh, leaders tell us is that once sycamore has run for maybe 10 weeks or seven weeks or one pathway, the relationships that are built up are such that leaders that are running those sessions will often reach out to people that have participated and say, look, you've got a real gift for um, facilitating discussion. Would you like to be part of the next one? Or you have a real joy in sharing your faith. Would you like to help us plan to run another session? So what we see are leaders coming from Sycamore sessions. And that's a real joy um, just in terms of their own confidence and their own faith journey. So why choose Sycamore? Um, just I thought I'd just give you the headlines now. Um, and this is based on what leaders have told me over the last two years. It works. So this is very much um, drawing on those um, quotes that we've seen. It works for small groups because of the discussion. Um, there's no jargon. People feel comfortable to share their own um, experiences in a really comfortable setting, which is warm and conducive to sharing their faith. Um, because there's no jargon, it means that anyone can attend and they're not going to feel um, overwhelmed or um, excluded from the discussions. Um, and it fosters community. So over COVID, um, we had an RCIA group run completely online for 18 months. And the leader that ran that group said if it wasn't for Sycamore being so possible to go from in-person to remote, to remotely operated, um, or remotely run, it wouldn't have worked, but it does, it fosters community. So it means that, for example, if you couldn't meet in person, or if you wanted to do a hybrid approach where you ran a pathway and ran some sessions in person, some online, then it's possible. It's it, it, it's not only possible, but it works equally well. Um, in many ways, some people that would never come out to the parish because perhaps they're housebound or they have small children would ultimately uh, join more readily because actually there's an online um, option. So the online is important. Um, as I said, it's rooted in Catholic tradition and culture. So this is um, something we're particularly proud of. It grows leaders from within Sycamore groups. Um, it's easy to run and there's no um, reinventing the wheel. And we also have training materials and support. So the picture on the right is just promoting a new series of training videos that we have there's six sessions if you wanted to run a sycamore course then all you we ask of you is that you register with us which is just an email address and then you can work your way through six videos that will literally take you from i want to run a sycamore course but how do i do it so there are training videos online all for free um and the other reason for joining Sycamore is that you join the Sycamore community. So as I said, um, we are now working across 12 countries. Um, we have 13 translations of the films. Um, we are really becoming an international community. And it's free. So as I said, although yes, we do appreciate donations from time to time. Um, 
that's all from me. I hope that that's um, given you a, a flavour of what Sycamore is and how perhaps it can work for you in your parish um, or your community. I want to just flag up the website so you can go to this after the session if you want and just have a look around, um, uh, look at the sessions, see how you can use them. Um, it'd be great if you can register your group with us. Um, there's a function on the website to tell us what your um, what your plans might be if you decide to run a group. Um, and then we can put you on the map. And the interactive map shows where all the Sycamore groups are around the world. Um, and what's great about the map is that people often come onto um, the Sycamore website and say, oh, I can see one running in Derry or I can see one running in London. Can you please tell me how I can join that one? So the interactive map is um, it has been helpful for people, I think. We have a regular newsletter um, that keeps you up to date on all of the Sycamore news. Um, and I've put my email address at the bottom because Part of the Sycamore culture is that we want to provide support. We want to support anyone that decides to use Sycamore um, for their group. And we want to follow up with you as well. So if you run a Sycamore pathway, please keep in touch with us. Please email directly and say, how do I work out the IT? How do I run something? How can um, you help with promotion? We are here to support you in that. Um, and then we love to follow up afterwards as well. Um, and it's a real joy for me to work with dioceses um, and to do follow up sessions to have people come back and say, yes, I ran a sycamore pathway. This is what happened. This was the result. So please do keep in touch. And on that note, I'm going to stop sharing um, and thank you very much for your time and um, attention. Thank you. I'm going to hand back to Father Peter. Um, I believe you may be uh, helping organise some breakout rooms. <laughs>